Hello, welcome to Middle East In Depth. Michael Knight and Michael Pregan write an article at the Washington Institute advising on how to take the city of Mosul from the Islamic State terrorist group. They question does the Iraqi army have the right stuff to win the battle everyone knows is coming and handle the messy aftermath? On February 19th, a senior official with U.S. Central Command leaked details about the most widely anticipated military offensive in the Arab world, the battle to retake the Iraqi city of al-Mosul. But as the writers argue, the most important question is, how should Mosul be liberated to ensure its long-term stability? After all, they say if Mosul is cleared of jihadis, only to fall to the Islamic State again some month later, then what's the point? What if Mosul collapses into factional warlordism akin to civil war era in Beirut or today's embattled Libyan capital Tripoli? The writers say the liberation of Mosul represents a unique challenge for the Iraqi government and its international partners. An early recapture of the city, in line with the time frame that the US military official outlined in February, remains unlikely to be realized. Equally significant, the writers add, is uh, what is clear that the Iraqi government cannot count on its standard formula of relying on predominantly Shiite militias to recapture the city. The Shiite popular mobilization units have aided desperate Sunni tribes in some cases, but Al-Mosul is the capital of Sunni Iraq, a city where the Shiite-dominated security forces of June 2014 expulsion was initially welcomed by city residents. The writers conclude that all this suggests that retaking and achieving basic stability in Al-Mosul will be a more complex and lengthy process that, than anticipated. Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi hinted at this reality on February the 16th when he said that Mosul could be liberated within three to five months or longer. He said it won't be easy and it may not be quick, but retaking Al-Mosul is an endeavor that this is worth undertaking and worth doing right. The Islamic State's grip over Iraq's second largest city has been a symbol of the movement's success. Al-Mosul may be the one battle in Iraq that can decisively prove that the Islamic State is a losing cause. And moving on to the Lebanon, where Esperance Ghanem, uh, main news anchor at Hezbollah Allied OTV channel in Lebanon, is featured in an article translated from Arabic and published in Al Monitor. The presidential vacuum, she says, ongoing since May the 25th of last year, is heavily affecting the decision-making mechanism of the cabinet, to which the powers of the head of state are transferred to in case of vacancy in the presidency for any reason, in accordance with Article 62 of the Lebanese Constitution. Since then, the cabinet's decisions have no longer been made by consensus. Regular issues such as draft laws no longer require a simple majority, and crucial issues such as the amendment of the Constitution and the decision to declare war and appointments to leading state and public service positions no longer require the approval of a two-thirds majority, and as stipulated also by Article 65 of the Constitution. The various political forces, she says, most notably the Christian parties, agreed on a mechanism requiring the signature of all 24 ministers on any degree to be issued in a move that was interrupted interpreted as a division of the presidential powers. Critical appointments of top security chiefs have plunged the government into a real crisis, particularly since they are not issues that can be excluded, such as those of landfills and the filling of the fourth basin of uh, Beirut's seaport. Intelligence Chief uh, Brigade General Edmond Fadel, who is to remain in his post until March the 20th, his term was extended several times starting April 3rd in a decision of Defense Minister Fayez Ghassan in accordance with Article 55. The security sources noted that the Defense Minister may sign an extension of Fadel's term for another six months. And the writer continues quoting sources asking to what extent is a cabinet consensus possible on the name of a new inter internal security forces general director at a time when the ministers disagree on less important issues such as the appointment of a female employee in the education ministry. The sources added that the cabinet's inability to appoint a successor will leave this post subject to the military hierarchy, meaning that the highest ranking officer in the directorate shall assume its functions here. And she adds an additional obstacle emerges, as the general who will most likely succeed Basbous is Shiite, Sunnis will inevitably object, particularly since the leadership of the directorate will be entrusted to the Sunnis, according to the prevailing norm in the Taif Agreement of 1989. And between the preservation of the Sunni post, the obstruction of citizens' affairs, and the risk that the post of the Internal Security Forces General Director turns into a sectarian problem, how far can the Prime Minister go? For more updates, please visit levant.tv.
or subscribe to Middle East in Depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching and bye for now.